Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribed, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevalier, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Coloring Easter eggs for your children is a wonderful custom. It's a lot of fun and a very simple operation, unless it's done by Phil Harris. Then it becomes a federal project. But more about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. Whatever your home decorating scheme, you can be sure there's a new 1953 RCA Victor television set designed to fit it perfectly. Is your living room modern? There are many RCA Victor TV sets styled for the modern home. The Kenbridge, for example, a handsome 21-inch deluxe set in natural walnut or limed oak. Is your home early American? RCA Victor's Yorktown, in a natural cherry finish, blends beautifully with the informality of early pieces. Do you love traditional English furnishings? Then you'll want to see RCA Victor's Southbridge, a beautiful new deluxe set in Regency styling. Whatever your taste in furniture styling, you're sure to find a new RCA Victor television set designed for your home. This year, there are more models, more styles than ever before in RCA Victor history. In fact, you have a choice of 22 models, 42 combinations of styles and finishes. So when you look for television, look at the sets praised for their beauty by many of the nation's foremost furniture designers. RCA Victor, they're America's most beautiful sets. And yet, prices actually start as low as $199.95. See the new 1953 RCA Victor television line at your dealers tomorrow. And remember this, with any one of these new RCA Victor sets, you can buy the world's best installation and maintenance through an RCA Victor factory service contract. It's another big reason why every year more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. Now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> For the past two weeks, the Harris children have been reminding Phil to buy them Easter egg dye. He promised them he would, but forgot all about it. Now as we look in, it is Easter morning, and Alice is berating Phil for having forgotten. Oh, Phil... How could you forget such an important thing? The girls have their hearts set on dying eggs. I'm sorry, honey, I'm sorry, I forgot. But stop worrying. I called Elliot a little while ago and told him to pick up some dye at the drugstore on his way over. Well, what if they're out of it? The girls will be disappointed. Why should they be disappointed if they don't have any dye? Because they've looked forward to your dyeing the eggs and hiding them so they can find them. Didn't your father ever do that for you when you were a child? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't call her no eggs. We had a much more exciting game in Tennessee. Oh, what did you do? Daddy used to camouflage his still. <laughs> <laughs> then we kids would pretend that we were revenue agents and we'd try to find it. Oh, and sometimes now. we did. Please, tell me something. You went to the drugstore yesterday just for the purpose of getting Easter egg dye. Why didn't you get it? Oh, I forgot to tell you about that. I was sidetracked. You know something? I walked into that drugstore, and right in front, somebody was giving a demonstration. Honey, it was the most fascinating demonstration I've ever seen. I couldn't resist the sales talk, and before I knew it, I bought two dozen pairs of plastic water wings. <laughs> Or two dozen pairs of plastic water wings? What are you going to do with them? We all know how to swim. I know, but I figured that they'd make excellent Christmas gifts for the boys in my band. Are you kidding? <laughs> Phil, the boys in your band haven't been near water in 20 years. <laughs> Honey, don't you understand? They don't have to use them in the water. If they strap them around their legs, they'll make lovely knee pads for craft games. <laughs> I still don't understand how that demonstrator talked you into buying those water wings. Well, I... 
Come in. Well, who, who was demonstrating them? Oh, a little old bald-headed man. I felt sorry for him. Hi, and I Curly. Bought... Hello, Alice. Oh, hello, Elliot. Hey, did you go to the drugstore like I asked you to? Yeah, hey, Curly, did you see the water wing demonstrator at the drugstore? Oh, you mean that little old bald-headed man? No, I mean that luscious redhead in the bikini bathing suit. <laughs> Get them suckers buying them like hotcakes. Yeah, all right, Ellie. You she get told that? me that yesterday some guy with a curly toupee came in and bought two dozen of them. So the demonstrator was a bald-headed old man, huh? He was when I saw her. <laughs> Elliot. Hmm? Did you buy the Easter egg dye at the drugstore? No, ma'am. They were all out of it. But I got something else for the kids that's just as good. Oh, what'd you get? A chemistry set. <laughs> With that, you can mix your own dyes. Yeah. Hey, that's an idea. We can make our own. Where's the chemistry set? Oh, that's in one of these packages here. Let's see. I had them tie the kids' package with a red ribbon so I'd know it from the others. Oh, here it is. What's in all them other packages? Water wings. <laughs> At two, Brutus? <laughs> hey, Elliot, let's get at that chemistry set. I can't wait to get started making that dye. That's gonna be a lot of fun, boy. Now, now just a minute, just a minute. I, I don't think you fellas ought to mess around with a chemistry set. Oh, honey, there's nothing to it. All we gotta do is follow the instructions. Hey, Elliot, hmm? where's the, uh, the instruction book? I told him to leave it out. <laughs> I figured we'd rough it. <laughs> Yes, it's more sporting when you add lib. You mean you two are going to mix chemicals without an instruction book? Yeah. There's no danger in making a chemical formula if one understands the proper procedure. That's right. It's important to mix your ingredients in the correct proportions. Right. Let's get started. <clears throat> Hand me that uh, measuring glass. Okay. Ah, then. We'll add a pony of this. <laughs> Two jiggers of that <laughs> And three fingers of that little doll right there I'll get the ice cube Yeah Don't forget the cocktail onion And the martini test tube oh, I will. In the meantime, you light the Bunsen burner I've always wanted a hot Gibson yeah. <laughs> With a twist of litmus paper. Yeah. <laughs> well, fellas, fellas, you're supposed to be making dye. Oh, yeah, yeah, dye. Sure. Hey, Elliot. Hmm? You should have kept that instruction book. How you make a dye? I don't know. There's a chart on the inside cover here, but it don't say anything about making dyes. Wait a minute. Tells you how to make ink, though. Ink? Ink? Ink. Oh, oh I get it. We make ink, and then we write a letter to the company to get the dye. No, no. <laughs> it tells you how to make different colored inks. Red, green, blue. We can use that to dye the egg. That's the colors we want. That's, That's a good idea. Let's get started. <laughs> Alice thought we couldn't make any dye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Elliot. Hmm? Look at all these beautiful shades we got. Red, green, yellow, and purple. I'll be darned. They did it. Yeah. And look at this egg we just dyed. Ain't it gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Hey, the color sticks good, too. Let's dye the rest of the eggs. Now, wait a minute. Before we dip them, I want to write the children's name on them, see? Oh, yeah, all right. Because then it'll make them kind of, you know, personal. All right. Hey, hand me that wax pencil. Here you go. Okay, now first I'm going to make one out for little Alice. A, L... I C E. He spells good. <laughs> of course I do. What do you think? I'm stupid or something? Now I'll write Phyllis on this one. F I L U S. <laughs> Curly, will you make one with my name on it? What for? I want to see what you do with Elliot. <laughs> That's a cinch to spell. L E Ut. L E. How you spell Ut? Why don't you just make it Sam? 
Will you just forget it and hand me that bowl of purple dye? I want to try that. Okay, Curly. Now, be careful how you handle it. It's filled right to the brim. Don't Take worry, it Curly. I can handle it. Here you are. Watch it. Now you're slopping it all over. I... I... Now you did it. Look what you did. You and your shaky hands. Oh, Billy, spilled it all over your shoes. Oh, certainly, can't it? Just look at them. They're purple all over my feet. Hey, Billy, home, it's me, Julius. I... Mr. Harris, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Here it is, Easter morning, and you're stomping grapes. <laughs> Julius. The least you can do is take your shoes off. <laughs> This ain't grape juice on my feet. It's Easter egg dye. What are you doing? Coloring your bunions? <laughs> Julia, what are you doing here on Easter Sunday? I came over to wish you a happy Easter and to show you my new suit. It's genuine blue sides with a belt on back. How do you like it? Oh, real jazzy. What time's the blown go up? <laughs> now, Phil, don't make fun of him. You have a blue serge suit just like it. I think you look very nice, Julius. Don't you think so, Elliot? Yeah, he looks real sharp in his new suit and derby. I ain't wearing no derby. That's me head. <laughs> <laughs> me mother curved my hair up at the edges. All right, all right. <laughs> We've heard enough. Hey, Elliot, yes, hand sir? me that bowl of red dye, will you? What are you doing? Die. I'm coloring all these eggs for Easter. Let me color some. No, I'm gonna color them. Ah, oh, come on. Coloring eggs is for little ones, and I'm a little one. A little what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Julius, now let go of that bowl. I will not. Let go of it, Ju Look out, you're spilling it out of my hand. Look out, Julius. Oh, Phil, you spilled the red dye all over Julius' suit. Well, kid, I'm sorry. I didn't mean Look to... what you did to me, Brandon. With two pair of pants and a baseball bat that I had to walk up four flights to get on sale. <laughs> Would you mind having another go at that? <laughs> what you did, you big ape? You spotted the dye all over me. What are you kicking about? Them red spots look good against that dark blue suit. Plenty sharp, don't they, Elliot? Yeah. They look like a bunch of bloodshot eyes peering out of a coal mine. <laughs> It doesn't strike me that way You get a different picture? Uh-huh I think it looks like a field of tomatoes Floating in a sea of prune juice <laughs> What's the matter with you guys? How can you laugh at a time like this? Ain't nothing sacred to you, jokes. <laughs> Look, Julius, I just... You went wrong me Easter suit. The suit that me poor little gray-haired mother wiped your fingers to the bone to get enough money for. $18.50. A whole life savings. Will you come... All right, and... stop yapping. <laughs> I told you I'm sorry. It was my fault. Just keep quiet and I'll get the spots out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll get them out. Alice, where's our spot remover? We don't have any more left, Phil. Well, then how am I going to get the spots out? You... Curly, have you forgotten? <laughs> we have the chemistry set. <laughs> you mean we'll make our own spot remover? Why not? We were very successful with the dye. True. But how are we going to make spot remover without that instruction book? This yet? I happen to know. Now, hand me a test tube. First, we'll pour a little sulfuric acid. <laughs> then we'll add a dash of nitric acid. <laughs> well, Curly, we did it again. Yeah. We made our own spot remover. Looks good, don't it? Sounds good, too. <laughs> 
Now we just put Julius' jacket on the table here, take our solution, and pour it over the spots like so. Hey, look at that cloud rising. <laughs> Beautiful mushroom effect. <laughs> Elliot, maybe we should have done this at Yucca Flats. Curly, we're safe as long as the wind don't change and blow the cloud back over the city. Hey, fellas, it's starting to white. Look at the spots go. Look at the suit go. <laughs> Boing me little table. Alice, stop talking like you used to before you got into pictures. <laughs> Look, kid, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it would work. I'll buy you a new suit tomorrow. I don't want one tomorrow. It's me Easter suit, and I need it today. But all the clothing stores are closed. I can't get you a suit today. Curly, I think we can get him a suit today. We gonna make him one with the chemistry set? <laughs> No. Have you forgotten the I.J. Grogan Clothing Company? Oh. Grogan is in the clothing business now? Oh, yeah. He's got a very high-class shop. He's open 24 hours a day, every day. Well, then let's go and get me a suit. All right, all right. I've ruined your suit, so I'm going to buy you a new one. Alice, you got any money? Yes. Here you are, Phil. Thanks, honey. Gee, you're a wonderful wife. You're so sweet and... Kind and generous. Cut the mush! I want me suit! <laughs> All right, come on, we'll get your suit. Hey, Elodie, have you got your RCA Victor personal radio with you? You know I'm never without it. Good. Turn it on. Peter Potter is about to play one of my records. Peace of Pudding. Peace of Pudding. Peace of Pudding Hot. Peace of Pudding Hot. Peace of Pudding Cold. Piece of pudding in the pot, just nine days old. Well, the patty cake, a patty cake, a baker's man. You got to put it in the oven just as fast as you can. Some like it hot and some like it cold. I like it in the pot, nine days old. Piece of pudding hot, piece of pudding cold. Piece of pudding in the pot, just nine days old. I didn't care much about going to school. It was all work and no play. But when I came home about half past three, I loved to hear my mama say, I got a piece of pudding hot. Hot pudding. I got a piece of pudding cold. Cold pudding. I got the pudding in the pot. Hot pudding. Just nine days old. Nine days old. I thought I had a steak called Juicy and Brown, but I looked on my plate and here's all I found. Just a piece, piece of pudding hot. Piece of pudding cold. Piece of pudding in the pot. Just nine days old. I don't want ham. I don't want greens. There's only one dish that pops my seam. It's a piece of pudding hot. You mean the hot pot pudding? Piece of pudding cold. Oh, the cold, cold pudding. Piece of pudding in the pot. You mean the pot pot pudding? Just nine days old. Just nine days old. Mama said, son, here's 15 cents. Go watch that elephant jump the fence. He jumped so high, he started to fly. We didn't get back till the 4th of July. Piece of pudding hot. That's the pot pot pudding. Piece of pudding cold. Oh, the cold, cold pudding. Piece of pudding in the pot. The pot, 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 pot pudding. Just nine days old. Just nine days old. Hot, hot pudding. Cold, cold pudding. Hot, hot pudding. Nine days old. Hot, hot pudding. Cold, cold pudding. Hot, hot pudding. Just nine days old. It's a very fine store. He carries nothing but the finest quality suitings that... Oh, here's his place now. Yeah, here it is. What a swell store. Look at that sign. I.J. Grogan, Custom Tailor. If you want to have a fit, buy one of our suits. <laughs> Fellas, I think I 
seen enough. I don't want no suit from a joint like this. It's not a joint. They got beautiful suits. Look at that window display. Look at that merchandise. What merchandise? All I see in the window is a sale sign. Bankruptcy sale? Going into business sale? Going out of business sale? <laughs> Advisory sale? Grand opening sale? Yeah, look at that one. Fire sale in June. <laughs> Why is he waiting till June to have the sale? Because he's not having the fire until May. <laughs> Children ask the silliest question. Pay no attention, folks. Come on, kid, let's get in here. I don't want to go in. If you ask me, this place is a jib joint. You sucking around for a sock and a kiss in? <laughs> Hiya, Groger. Hiya, Harris. This little creep belong to you? <laughs> no, 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 Groger. We brought him down here to get him a suit. Oh, so you want to get a suit, eh, kid? Well... Come on inside and look around. I don't want <laughs> Glad you decided to come in. Put me down, you think? <laughs> you me in. Just a service to our customers. Now, what do you want? The kid wants to buy a blue serge suit, Grogue. Oh, hello, Elliot. It's good to see you. I see that you're still wearing a suit that I made for you last week. It's holding together nicely. <laughs> yeah, it is. I thought sure it would come apart at the seams. You kidding? When we staple a suit together, it stays stable. <laughs> That doorknob, it's electrified. <laughs> you want a suit? You have come to the right place. We can make you a suit that is out of this world. It is carefully put together by expert tailors. Each stitch is a masterpiece of craftsmanship. <laughs> we'll get started right away. I need a suit today. I can't wait to have it made. You can't wait ten minutes? <laughs> All right, I'll put two men on. You can have it in five minutes. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Grogan. Look, hold it a minute now, because we don't want nothing fancy. You see, I'm paying for this suit, and I don't want to pay too much. All I want is a plain, blue, ready-made suit. You have come to the right place. I got one right here, and let's not haggle, because in this store, we only got one price. That I like. What's the price? How much do you got on you? Eight dollars. That's the price. <laughs> Broken, I don't want to spend no eight dollars. Now, if you if you got something for around four fifty, you have come to the right place. In fact, I happen to have a special bargain here, and I have a suit here that'll cost you four fifty. And I guarantee you can't tell it from a five dollar suit. <laughs> that sounds exactly what I want. Take it off the rack. Let me see. All right, gladly. Here it is. Just take a look at this suit, kid. This is a beautiful blue suit, huh? It's got a slight factory imperfection, but I bet that you can't even notice it. I defy you to tell me what is wrong with this suit. It's only got one sleeve. <laughs> She's got an eye like an eagle. <laughs> Kid, if you're gonna be picky on about it, I'll give you the same suit with two sleeves. Make it three sleeves and we'll take it. I don't care if you put four sleeves on. I don't want no cheap 450 suit. Well, that's all you're gonna get, so keep quiet. Wrap it up, Grogan. Wait a minute, Mr. Grogan. Maybe the suit don't fit me. How about alterations? You have come to the wrong place. <laughs> we don't do no alterations. Besides, you won't need any. It's your size. I say to Julia, just suit. forget about it. Forget about it, Grogan. No alterations. We'll take the suit back to my house, try it on, and if it don't fit, Alice will fix it. Everything. <laughs>
All right, Julius, go in my bedroom and try on your new suit. Fine suit you got me. It's four fifty wet or nothing. Will you stop squawking? Just go in the bedroom and try it on. Hey, look, be careful. My good blue serge suit is on that bed. Don't sit on it. I don't want it wrinkled. Don't worry, I won't touch you. Good blue suit? Yeah, why not? I'll be right back, Mr. Harris. <laughs> How's it fit? Don't fit at all. It's too big. The pants are dragging on the floor, the sleeves are hanging to the ground, and the seat is just coming out of the bedroom door now. <laughs> That's funny. That Grogan said it was your size. How can it be so big? Wait a minute. I better call Alice to fix it. Ah, oh, don't bother, Miss Faye. Just a minor alteration. You can do it, Mr. Harris. Here's a pair of scissors. Just cut the trousers leg and the sleeve to size. Okay, I think I can fix it okay. Hold still now. All right, give me the other trouser leg. Ah. How's it look, Elliot? You cut one leg shorter than the other. <laughs> Looks like he's standing on the side of a hill. <laughs> Okay. Turn around. <laughs> there you are. Hey, what are you going to do about that seat? Still too big. Cut it out. We can stitch it together later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looks good, kid. Well, I'm glad you like it, because this is your suit. Well, as long as <laughs> my suit. <laughs> you made me cut down my good blue serge suit. Serves you right for trying to suit off on me. If I'm gonna look like a bum, so are you. <laughs> Julius, I'm supposed to wear it to the Easter parade. Go ahead and wear it. How can I? The suit's all cut away. My arms will show and my legs will show. Ain't you forgetting something? <laughs> Because I'm wearing blue serge shorts. They'll blend beautifully. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. If you have a radio around the house that hasn't worked for months, chances are it can easily be restored to its original fine performance. If you learn that weak or worn-out receiving tubes are the cause of your radio's troubles, have your serviceman replace them with top-quality RCA tubes. You can depend on RCA tubes to give you the best reception your radio can deliver. Look for the colorful red, white, and black RCA tube cartons on your serviceman's shelves or in his carrying case. Dependable RCA tubes cost you no more. This is Phil again. Folks, Alice and I would like to extend sincere congratulations to Station W.O.W. in Omaha, Nebraska on the celebration of its 30th anniversary. Best wishes for a long and continued success to W.O.W. and thanks so much for carrying our program. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed was Sheldon Leonard. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. The jazz singer made famous by the late Al Jolson, now even greater than ever, with Danny Thomas playing the stellar role in the new Warner Brothers movie. Eight wonderful songs from the great new jazz singer film have been recorded for RCA Victor by the star himself. Get RCA Victor's new jazz singer album on long play or 45 extended play albums. Next, hear Theatre Guild on the air over NBC.